Let's stick with the housing market now and bring in Lindsay Piegza. She is chief economist at Stiefel Financial. Uh, good to see you, Lindsay. So uh, this this housing report, you know, we saw housing be strong and be on the rebound prior to the pandemic. Do you think that housing is going to be the thing that helps lead us out of this, that helps lead the economic recovery? Well, I think what we're hoping for is the consumer overall is going to be strong enough to lead us out of this recovery. Not only stronger uh, housing numbers, although weaker than consensus, we also saw yesterday's retail sales report suggest that the consumer is, while even being isolated, still spending out in the marketplace, albeit on different items within their basket of goods. So there is hope that the consumer isn't quite as weak as expected, but we're still talking about quite a bit of space to recoup before we're back to pre-pandemic levels. Even looking specifically at housing, we have quite a ways to, call, uh, to claw back. Or from the retail sales front, we're still talking about down over 8% from where we were at the start of the year. So some of those numbers are beginning to paint a more positive picture, suggesting that we are taking steps in the right direction, but we still have quite a, a ways to go before we could talk about uh, a recovery on the consumer front. Lindsay, uh, the strength that we have seen in the consumer, uh, I would say maybe the past four weeks, is that sustainable? Does that go back or is it just like a one time shot in the arm and it goes back in the fall to the way it was, let's say, three or four months ago? That's a great question. And that's one of the concerns that we have. One data point, two data points, of course, does not make a trend. And what we're likely to see is that this is the second phase of a three phase uh, pathway to recovery. We came off of lows. That was phase one. Now we're seeing a bounce. That's phase two. But as we heard from the chairman yesterday, the pathway to reaching a longer term sustainable upward trend is going to be very uncertain, very slow, and we may see a fall back down on the consumer front. A lot of this initial bounce is a reflection of pent up demand after being isolated for weeks, but not necessarily indicative, again, of that longer term sustainable trend. So I do anticipate a lot of volatility going forward from here as we continue to face both health and financial constraints from the individual and household balance sheet. You know, one of the things that's been helping housing all along have been these these low rates. And uh, I know at Stiefel, you're indicating that you expect rates to remain low through 2022. Is anything that you heard from Chairman Powell yesterday uh, change that view at all for you? No, no. And remember, the most recent press conference from the chairman, even before yesterday's testimony, he told us the Fed isn't even thinking about thinking about raising rates. So they, too, have echoed this notion of low interest rates for as far as the eye can see, at least until 2022 or beyond. So really perpetuating the notion that we will see very accommodative financial conditions for the next several years. Lindsay, as an economist, do you trust any of the data that we're getting right now on the consumer, on housing, on the jobs market? Because I think a lot of investors uh, are really being confused by data in, in many respects they have never seen before in their investing lifetimes. Well, we certainly trust the data in the sense that it's accurate, but it might not be telling the whole story. A lot of the data comes from surveys, comes from businesses reporting uh, evidence of, of payrolls or sales, and some of that may be incomplete. It may be more difficult to get in this unprecedented environment. So again, yes, it is accurate, but it may not be giving us quite the full picture as it typically does when we have full access to businesses and individuals functioning in the marketplace. So, Lindsay, we know the government is pumping an alarming amount of money into the system to keep things liquid. Yesterday, we had Powell uh, basically strongly suggest that we need more fiscal stimulus if we're going to come out of this uh, um, pandemic uh, a little bit stronger, perhaps, than we are right now. Are you concerned about the debt levels this country is taking on in order to continue to pump that money into the system? Well, I think most people would agree that the Fed and the federal government needed to step in and take unprecedented action. This is, of course, unprecedented times, and I certainly don't use that term lightly. But going forward, we do have to be cognizant that a lot of the policies put in place to help stem the economy during this difficult time will create barriers to growth as we begin to emerge from the pandemic, particularly, as you mentioned, the debt levels. We're now talking about the highest debt to GDP levels since World War II. Of course, back then, we were embarking on a decade-long expansion of 4.5% growth, meaning that we could grow ourselves out of it. This time around, we're taking on those massive amounts of, of fiscal uh, balance sheets, 
and the debt, or excuse me, and the growth rate is likely to be less than 2%, even as we begin to approach a longer term recovery. So it's going to be much more difficult for us to grow out of these debt levels, which could very much retard the longer term potential capacity for the US economy. So this is certainly something that we want to be very aware of before we throw trillions more at the problem. Lindsay, how awful is the jobs market uh, in America? We see the stats, you know, we're coming off, I think that, that positive or upbeat jobs report is still in the minds of many investors. But you have Jay Powell warning again for the second time in as many weeks uh, that the labor market is under severe stress. And I've seen estimates uh, calling for at least uh, maybe 25 million people are still out of work right now, which doesn't jive with a lot of the more upbeat data we've been getting. Well, it doesn't necessarily not jive with the upbeat data. We saw that we actually added, surprisingly, 2 million jobs last month. And this was the low-hanging fruit. This was a lot of businesses anticipating that they were able to reopen, even at reduced capacity. And they were pulling back some of those temporarily laid off or furloughed workers. But that's about 10% of the total loss of jobs that we've seen. As you mentioned, still 20 million Americans or more out of work. So it was a small step in the right direction. But as Jerome Powell has been pointing out, the labor market is far from recovered. And many of those temporarily laid off or furloughed could actually face a longer term or permanent state of joblessness if, in fact, we don't see many of those other businesses reopen. We've heard from a plethora of small businesses suggest that they haven't been able to bridge the gap over the past couple of months, and they've actually decided to close their doors permanently. And if we see that as an ongoing trend, that could continue to devastate the labor market going forward. So, yes, it was a positive report, but we still have a tremendous amount of devastation in the labor market to work through going forward. That's for sure. All right. Lindsay Piegza, Chief Economist at Stiefel Financial. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.